If you're in the market for a new vehicle, leasing a car is something that you might be considering. Well, this is going to be the ultimate guide to leasing a car, so I would highly recommend watching from beginning to end. We're going to be covering leasing versus buying, what are the best vehicles to lease, how a zero down lease works, and also information on the federal EV credit if you are considering leasing an electric vehicle. And feel free to skip ahead at any point in time using the table of contents in the description below. Let's dive right in. First of all, what does it mean to lease a car? When you lease a car, you are actually renting that car instead of owning it, and that rental period is normally two to four years. Instead of paying down an auto loan to eventually own the vehicle, instead, you are paying a monthly fee to the leasing company in order to use their car. There's misconceptions out there, just like with the prospect of buying versus renting a home, and many are under the impression that leasing is always more expensive than buying. How However, depending on your situation, it might actually make sense for you to lease a vehicle versus buying a vehicle. Let's compare the prospect of leasing a car versus buying a car now. On the surface, leasing can seem more appealing as the monthly payment for a lease is almost always lower than paying down an auto loan. However, there's a huge differentiator here. When you buy a car and then pay it off over time, you will eventually own that vehicle free and clear. When you lease a vehicle, you will likely turn it in after the lease term ends and then simply start a new lease. Leasing can put you on the path of never ending monthly payments for your vehicle. However, in the same breath, owning a five plus year old vehicle is not going to be free either. There will always be maintenance involved with owning an older vehicle and some people would simply prefer to pay for a lease versus assuming the responsibility for repairs to an older vehicle. Now, a huge factor in determining whether or not you should buy versus lease is going to be the number of miles that you drive per year. When you buy a vehicle, whether you pay for it outright or make payments on it, you can put as many miles on it as you wish because you own the vehicle. However, when you lease a vehicle, there is a limit on how many miles that you can drive that vehicle per year or for the entire term of the lease. In most cases, that limit is 12,000 miles per year or 36,000 miles for a 36 month lease. So right off the bat, if you average more than a thousand miles per month on your vehicle, leasing is probably not the right fit for you. If you go over this limit, you're going to be charged a per mile rate at the end of your lease, and this is typically 10 to 25 cents per mile. Let's say, for example, you put 45,000 miles on a vehicle that you were leasing for 36 months and 36,000 miles. Well, that would be 9,000 miles over the lease limit. At 25 cents a mile, that could be as much as $2,250 that you would have to pay the leasing company when you've turned in the lease. Now, if you expect to go over your mileage limit for the lease term, you can actually buy extra miles up front at the beginning of your lease, and it's usually a lot cheaper this way. Now, aside from just the mileage factor and the lower monthly payment, here's a few more reasons why you might choose to lease a vehicle versus buy a vehicle. If you prefer to drive a vehicle with the latest safety features and that is under a full warranty, leasing allows you to do exactly that. When you lease a vehicle, you are not responsible for the maintenance, and in some cases, even the oil changes are included as part of your package. However, if you buy a car, you're going to be fully responsible for any repairs that fall outside of your factory warranty. Leasing has the advantage of giving you a fixed monthly cost for your vehicle expense, whereas owning a vehicle is going to be a variable cost because eventually you're going to have to pay for repairs out of pocket. In addition, when you lease, you don't have to worry about the hassle of selling your car or trading it in because at the end of your lease, you just turn it back over to the leasing company. And then as mentioned, in most cases, you would start a new lease and get a brand new vehicle. There's also tax advantages for business owners when it comes to leasing a car. You can deduct a portion of your monthly lease payment based on what percentage of time you use it for personal versus business reasons. However, there are some significant downsides to leasing that you should be aware of. First, First of all, if you like making modifications to your vehicle, leasing probably isn't for you as you need to return the vehicle in the same condition as it left the showroom. On that same topic, it's also possible to get charged for excess wear and tear if you end up scratching the vehicle, damaging the outside, smoking in it, or really 
really messing up the interior. So if you happen to be rough on your vehicles, leasing is probably not for you. Lastly, if you decide that you don't want this vehicle anymore in the middle of your lease, it can be very costly to get out and you can end up paying thousands of dollars in early termination fees and penalties. So if you do decide to lease a vehicle, your best bet is to commit for the entire term of that lease. You should now have a general idea on if leasing or buying makes sense for you. However, I want to bring in a third alternative option, which is going to be purchasing a certified pre-owned vehicle. If you want to own a vehicle, but you don't want to take a massive hit on that depreciation, buying a certified pre-owned vehicle can be a great alternative. Most dealerships offer vehicles that are a few years old that come with an extended warranty. In fact, many of them are actually leases that have been turned back over to the dealer. Vehicles will depreciate the most in the first few years that you own them, so buying a pre-owned vehicle that's already taken the biggest depreciation hit could be a solid alternative. You just want to make sure you choose something that's reliable, and we're going to talk about that later. But what about the prospect of leasing an electric vehicle? This comes with a unique incentive of a federal tax credit of up to $7,500. There's a lot of hoops that you have to jump through to get this credit when buying a vehicle, but it's actually a lot easier to get this credit when you lease a vehicle. In most cases, the leasing company will actually be the ones taking the EV credit, and then they pass that savings along to you in the form of a lower monthly lease payment. You'll want to talk to your dealer about the specifics of this federal tax credit, but this can be a big incentive for those looking to drive an electric vehicle. In addition, leasing can actually make a lot of sense for this type of vehicle, and that's because the used market is extremely unpredictable for electric vehicles. Since this is still a new technology, significant improvements are being made, and this has resulted in many EVs depreciating faster than gasoline vehicles. Let's talk about the potential for a $0 down lease now and whether or not this is recommended. Oftentimes, you'll hear about these zero down leases on television, and they tell you that you can simply sign and drive away in a brand new vehicle. However, it doesn't normally work like that. A zero down lease normally refers to a $0 down payment for the vehicle, but there are still other fees that are paid associated with leasing that vehicle, including your first monthly payment, registration, taxes, and document fees. Even without making a down payment on your lease, those other fees can still add up to hundreds, if not over a thousand dollars or more. In some cases, you can roll these costs into your monthly lease payment, but this is generally not recommended. First of all, if you don't have the money to pay the fees up front, you should consider if you even have the means to make the lease payments. In addition, a $0 down payment lease is going to be a lot more expensive every single month when compared to a traditional monthly lease payment where you make a down payment. Here's a few options for a local Toyota dealership near me and looking at this 2024 Toyota Corolla, the lease payment is $213 a month with $4,500 as your down payment. However, if you wanted to do this with a $0 down payment, your monthly lease payment would jump to $349 a month or a 64% increase. And over that 36 month lease term, you would end up paying an extra $4,896, which is higher than the $4,500 down because of the interest that you're paying. If you're serious about leasing a car, you should aim to put together $6,000 to $7,500 to cover your down payment as well as other drive off fees. And this is going to give you the lowest monthly lease payment possible. Now, what are the best vehicles out there to lease? Well, in order to understand this, it's important to know what you're actually paying for with a lease. When you lease a car, you're paying for the vehicle's depreciation as well as interest, taxes, and fees. That means vehicles that depreciate faster, such as luxury vehicles, are going to be more expensive to lease. What you want to look for is a vehicle with high residual value. This means it won't depreciate as fast, and as a result, the monthly lease payment will be lower. In addition, you should also consider the potential to buy the vehicle from the leasing company at the end of your lease.
fees, as this is common practice. This can also be a way to get around the per mile fee if you went over your allotted number of miles for the lease term. If there's any chance that you might want to buy the vehicle at the end of your lease, you should choose something that is very reliable and with a high residual value. With that being said, here's some of the best vehicles to consider. Honda and Toyota are known for making some of the most reliable vehicles on the road, so this is often a great place to start. However, in recent years, other foreign automakers like Hyundai and Kia have really stepped up their game as well. For the most part, domestic vehicles like Ford, Dodge, and Chevy aren't the best because they don't hold their value as well as foreign automakers do. As mentioned before, luxury vehicles like a Mercedes-Benz don't make for the most affordable lease. Most people who lease a luxury vehicle are doing so because they like being able to drive a brand new car with all of the bells and whistles, not because it's a wise move financially. You should also look into any leasing specials that a vehicle manufacturer or car dealer might be offering, and this could be a lower interest rate or possibly a lower monthly payment on that lease, for example. Finally, we've reached the negotiation phase of the car lease. Most people don't realize there is definitely some wiggle room for negotiation when it comes to leasing a car, and you should start off by retrieving the KBB or Kelly Blue Book value of any vehicle that you're considering leasing. Once you have the desired vehicle in mind and your KBB in hand, the next step is to reach out to multiple dealerships in your area to shop around for the best deal, and you can usually do this right over the phone. A great strategy to follow is taking a quote from one dealership and then going to other dealers to see if they could possibly do better. Once you've come to an agreement with the dealership, it's time to sign your paperwork and drop off your funds for the down payment plus any other fees that you are paying up front. And in most cases, this will be with a bank certified check. And during this process, do not be afraid to ask questions. It's the salesperson's responsibility to make sure that you fully understand what you are signing. Before signing your paperwork, make sure that the lease term, the mileage limit, and the monthly payment are what you agreed to, and if they're not, definitely ask questions. In addition, you should also make sure that the lease contract includes gap insurance. This is an insurance policy that you pay for as part of your monthly lease payment, and that covers you in the event that you total the vehicle or it ends up being stolen. Gap insurance covers the difference between the actual cash value of the vehicle and the amount owed on the car loan or lease. Your insurance company is only required to pay you the actual cash value. So if there's a difference between the dollar amount that you receive and then the amount that you owe, this gap insurance policy will cover that difference. If you don't have gap insurance, you would have to pay this out of pocket if your vehicle was stolen or totaled, which can be very costly. And not all lease contracts out there automatically include gap insurance. So you should definitely ask about this ahead of time when you're negotiating with the dealerships. There you have it, guys. That's an A to C guide on leasing a car for beginners. You now know the ins and outs of how leasing a car works and how to get the best deal possible. Or perhaps this video showed you that buying a new or certified pre-owned vehicle might be the best route for you. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, subscribe, and hit the bell for all future notifications. You can click below to watch my video about how to invest in the S&P 500 for beginners, and I'll see you there.